We've already looked at three POC analog cameras that we installed for our customers. But now it's time to move on to the IP ones. And today we're going to be taking a look at the 4 megapixel Dark Fighter IP camera from Hitvision. Now for those that follow the channel, unknown, I actually reviewed this camera's little brother a good few years ago when I first started our YouTube journey. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'll link back in the description. But this camera's changed a little bit. We'll do an unboxing and we'll get it outside in our test rig, get some day night footage and then we can do our comparison of how we think this camera performs. So let's get started. Let's unbox it. Inside the box, you get the manual, user manual. I, I've never read that, I tend to just chuck that away. You get the drill template. Then you get the tool, which is a Torx, I think it's a T10 or a T20. I think you get both T20 and T10 Torx bit, the security Torx bit, so they've got the little hole inside. You also get the famous plugs and screws. Chuck them away, don't use them. They're made of cheap Chineseium and they'll strip and you'll regret it. Just get some decent red plugs and wood screws. The last thing you get is the waterproof connector for the camera. Now the idea behind the waterproof connector is that you slot one end over the cable that you've terminated and the other ring goes onto the camera itself and it keeps a nice tight waterproof connection over your RJ45. I wouldn't be surprised if it voids the warranty if Hick find you haven't used this but how they prove or disprove that I'm not 100% sure. The final thing you get in the box is the camera itself and the first thing you notice is the size of it compared to some of the POC cameras we've reviewed recently. Not only is the box about twice the size, but the camera itself is a lot chunkier. The case is made of metal in, a, in comparison to some of the plastic TVI cameras or POC cameras we looked at recently. And it's just got a bit of a better feel to it. The build quality just feels more expensive, but the camera itself is more expensive. Now, if you're installing this camera onto a brick wall and you can't feed the cable back through it because you have to drill a pretty big hole for that connector, um, I'd advise you use one of the specified bases for these cameras. They are a DM21 base. I don't think the universal base fits these cameras, but I wouldn't use it anyway because it's messy and it looks chunky. And I wouldn't use whisker boxes or waterproof boxes next to the camera. I would just use the recommended base from Hikvision. It looks neat. What we'll do now is I will take the camera outside. I'll get it on our test rig. We'll give it 24 hours. We'll get some day and night footage. And then I'll check back with you guys in the morning. Just before I do install that camera, I've got a big ask. About 98% of you who watch the content on this channel, and I hope you are enjoying it, aren't subscribed. So if you could hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell icon so you're notified when new videos come out. Anyway, let's get that camera installed. <laughs> Don't panic, I thought there was going to be a fault then, but there wasn't. It turns out, as I'd put the mouse down, I'd just hit the little scroll wheel and it had flicked onto a channel that had no video. I did spend a couple of minutes checking cables and restarting the recorder, but thankfully, um, it was just something as simple as that. There is a problem though, and that is that outside the shop, the light levels stay too high for the camera to click into its infrared mode. This is actually a good thing about the Dark Fighter cameras and explains quite well how the Dark Fighter technology works. So traditional cameras will reach a certain light level and click over into the infrared night mode where the picture goes black and white and it uses an infrared light to bounce off an object and as it comes back to the camera that's what creates the picture. A dark fighter can achieve full colour images a lot lower than traditional cameras 
and stay in a full colour picture. We love these dark fighters and we use them on industrial estates and farms, places where light levels really do struggle during the night, but during the day they're absolutely fine and they can stay in full colour. So I've no choice but to move the camera and at the back of our shop we have an alleyway and down there there is no ambient lighting during the night, nobody has any spotlights or security lights down there and it should allow the camera to drop into its infrared mode. And it should also give us a decent understanding of how the camera performs when it's pretty much pitch black. Now there's no cable to that area of the alleyway for a camera so I'm going to have to wire it which is why I've come in at, I don't know if you can see that, I come in early this morning before all of our staff come in so that I can get the hole drilled, the cable fed in, get it connected up and we can get some more footage. So let's make a start. The office doesn't normally look like this. We're undergoing a bit of a refurb at the moment. We're joining teams with a telecoms company who are moving into some space that we've created and we are creating office space for our accounts department so that they've got some privacy when doing all the accounts and payroll and things like that. So on the video, you're gonna see the office looking like a bomb is it, but just ignore it for now. The first thing I need to do is figure out where the hole that I'm going to drill needs to come in. I know our fibre cable for our gigabit line comes in here, so I want to make sure that I am well away from that. Looks good. So I'll drill it out and I'll clip it round to the alleyway. It doesn't have to be neat, it just needs to do a job for now and then we'll rip it out when we're done. I do hope no one's sleeping. She's beautiful. Well away from that fiber cable, just where we wanted it. Let's send some cable in. Now, if you install camera systems or pull in little fine cables all the time through brick walls, this will be a bit of a game changer for you. Somebody showed me this a while ago, so I can't claim it to be mine, but it's a brilliant little technique. So, take a strip of tape, attach that strip of tape through there. So you're almost looking like you're starting to roll a as my son puts it, a dirty cigarette. Take your cable and put your cable into the end and then wrap it around like you're finishing it all off and then don't finish there, you want to get your tape, put your tape there and pull tight each time you wrap it around, pull it tight each time you wrap it around and eventually it will create a strong enough hold so the cable can go through the wall without being side by side and getting caught on a small little hole you've just drilled. So what, you know. so what I've got to do now is I've got to run the cable through this wall, go back inside, I'll pop a couple more ceiling tiles out and I'll pull that rod over and drop it into the bottom of the cabinet so that it can be terminated at a later date. Then I'll come back outside, I'll measure the cable to length and I'll cut it where I want it and I can start hammering some clips along the wall. Like I say, it doesn't have to be amazingly neat this. It's not a customer's house, it's just a temporary rig set up that I need to get done before the lads come in at 8 o'clock. So the cable's done and it looked pretty terrible. Let me quickly show you. So it starts off there, it comes round, there's a bit of a loop there and it starts to go a bit higgledy piggledy here as the roof drops away. And then it goes straight across the window, which isn't something you see every day. Uh, there's a nice little loop at the end, which looks awful. Uh, and it comes round and loops into the camera. Now I've used a DM21 base on the camera because a lot of the cameras from this point forward use the same base. So the colour views, the 4K colour view will all use this base. So if we need to use this rig again, we've got it. So I finally managed to pull off some day and night footage of the camera now that we moved it into the alleyway. It's clicked over into its infrared mode so it gives us a true representation of what the camera looks like when things are pretty much pitch black. If we start by looking at the day footage you can see that the picture quality is pretty good. There's a tiny little bit of graininess around certain objects but majority of things within the picture are quite clear and you can see that even more if we compare it to a cheaper alternative camera that we reviewed several videos ago. You wouldn't believe that the camera we reviewed first is actually branded as a 5 megapixel and this is branded as a 4 megapixel because side by side the picture quality is miles different. Don't get me wrong there's a slight bit of graininess to certain things within the within the image for example if I zoom in over the road on the text of the signage of the bed shop it's not amazingly identifiable what those what that signage says but overall for a 4 megapixel camera 
I think you're getting great quality out of this. The thing that really stands out in comparison to the cheaper alternative camera is the smoothness of how objects transition through the video. So on the cheaper alternative, you can see that there's a bit of a stutter and a judder to them. And on the more expensive four megapixel dark fighter, the objects transition through the picture or the image really, really well. And that's because this camera is capable of achieving up to 30 frames per second which is similar to what we filmed on this GoPro. If I switch that over and we look at the nighttime footage, you can see that the camera's clicked over into what we call its infrared mode. So the picture has gone black and white and that's just how infrared cameras work. Now I did make a little bit of a cock up. The camera on the bargain booze that points down the alleyway towards the entrance is obviously infrared as well, which means that the light isn't visible to the human eye, but is visible by another infrared camera. So it is blinding our camera ever so slightly. Had that camera not been there and the light off that camera not been shining towards us, we would have been able to see much further down that alleyway than we can originally see. But with the time constraints that I've got to do these videos, I unfortunately can't redo the whole rig. Again, if we pull it up side by side by our cheaper alternative, you can see that the image is much clearer. The downside to an infrared camera is things like number plates which are reflective and the signage and writing on the bin has is almost disappeared because the infrared light's a little bit too strong and it's casting too much light towards that. You could potentially try and correct that in the settings if you needed to, but at least it gives you a fair representation of what this camera looks like during the night. Now, I'm gonna give you the three things that I love most about this dark fighter camera. The first being, and we discussed this earlier in the video, is the ability for this camera to stay in a full color picture right down to really, really low light levels. And in fact, if you have a lot of ambient lighting around the property in which you're installing it, you could almost get away with this as an alternative to a color view, which is a more expensive camera. More ambient lighting means the camera can absorb more light and stay in a full color image. The second thing I like about this camera is as a standard, it comes with a microphone, but you can upgrade the camera to come with a speaker as well. So it gives the user or the customer the ability to listen to who's there and record audio so you could install this camera within a doorway if you wanted to and almost use it in a little bit like a ring function so you'd get a notification when someone arrives and you could speak to them through the camera using the button on the app and the third and final thing i like about this camera and it's going to be a common theme now for the for the ip cameras we review going forward is just the smoothness of the objects that move through the image in comparison to an analog camera or a POC camera that we looked at previously, objects just look much smoother. And if you can achieve up to 30 frames per second, you pretty much bob on where you need to be to get the best out of a CCTV system. As I said before, megapixels sell cameras, but frames per second is what actually makes a camera worthwhile investing in. If we're gonna talk about this camera's positives, it's only right that we look at the alternative, the downsides to these types of cameras. And there's a couple of things that I don't like about them. The first being the size of the camera. These are definitely a lot chunkier and a lot bigger than the POC or the TVI alternatives that we reviewed previously, especially if you use a base. They do stand out on walls a lot more, and if that's the look that you're going for, then great, but if you want something a little bit more sleek and a little bit more hidden, then maybe the TVI smaller alternatives are a better one to go for. The second thing that I don't like is that it's an infrared camera, and that just means it goes into a black and white image at night. It's a bit of a personal preference, this more than anything, but if a camera could stay in a full color, I think you get miles more depth of image and objects are easily identifiable when they're in color. But don't get me wrong, if you're installing this camera in pitch black, it's more than likely going to perform better than the old color view alternative. And that's gonna come in a later video where we'll head to head them against each other, the color view versus a dark fighter. So that's it. We've looked at the four megapixel dark fighter camera from Hikvision. I hope you found this review really helpful. If you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on the video if there's a camera that you're looking at purchasing and we can get it in. If enough of you need it, we'll do a review on it. But we're next up, we're going to look at the 4 megapixel colour view, which is almost a direct competitor to this dark factor. Thanks again for watching, guys. Catch you next time.